Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at why it is not wise to think of an image in terms of being a 5 by 7 image or an 18 by 13 centimeter image because that is totally meaningless. The only thing that you're going to get by something being 5 by 7 is some sort of ratio between its width and height but nothing more. So let's swing across here to Photoshop and see just what I'm talking about. This image is scaled to be 5 by 7 inches, but so too is this image, and this one, and this one. They're all 5 by 7 images. They are all, in fact, the exact same image. That's how they started, and they're all 5 by 7. When I go to Image, Image Size in Photoshop, you'll see here it's 7 by 5. Its resolution is 72 pixels per inch. That's a hint as to what's going on here. Let's have a look at this higher quality version. Image, image size. Its size is the same, 7 by 5, but this is 300 pixels per inch. Again, this is a higher quality image. This is not a very good quality image, but it's still 7 by 5. 7 by 5 inches. Its resolution is 30 pixels per inch. And this one that just looks like pixels, let's go and see what it is. Well, it's 7 by 5 as well, but it's only 4 pixels per inch. So talking about an image in terms of its width of 7 inches and its height of 5 inches, as you can see, is absolutely meaningless when it comes to printing this image because this is going to print just as a set of blocks. This one's going to print at really poor quality. You can see it's really, really pixelated. This one's a little bit better, but it's still nowhere good enough to print. And this one is a high quality print. So when you're thinking in terms of the size of an image for printing, what's not important really is the 5 by 7 bit, but what's really important is its resolution. So when you're talking about images, the 5 by 7 is only giving you the ratio of its height to its width. That's all. And what's really important is the resolution of the image, whether it's going to print something that looks like this or something that looks like this. Both 5 by 7 images, very, very different in terms of how they're going to print. So I want to introduce you to a site called pixelcalculator.com. And I have Pixel Calculator open here, and I'm working in inches and DPI. PPI is pretty much the same for our purposes, so don't worry about that. I'm going to put in here our 7 by 5. And I'm going to type in here the 300 DPI or PPI that we were getting in Photoshop. And you'll see here that this image size is going to be 2100 pixels by 1500 pixels. If we take this down to 72 pixels per inch, then you'll see that the pixel dimensions of the image are different. So even though this is still a 7 by 5 inch image, the pixel dimensions, number of pixels across and down, are shrinking when we decrease the DPI. When we set it to 30, then we're going to get an image that is 210 by 150 pixels. And now let's enter the resolution of that very poor pixelated image, 28 by 20 pixels. Let's go and have another look at it. Here it is, it's 28 pixels by 20 pixels in size. Each one of these is just a pixel. So a site like this, pixelcalculator.com, will give you an idea as to how many pixels you need in an image if you want to be able to print it at 7 inches by 5 inches at 300 pixels per inch or dots per inch. This is what you're going to need in terms of image size. Your image needs to be 2100 by 1500 pixels. And that's going to be the same if you're working in centimeters, for example. So I've just switched to centimeters. If you want a 17.78 centimeter image by 12.7 centimeters at 300 dpi, then it has to be this pixel measurement. Now while we have Pixel Calculator up on the screen here, let's talk about another scenario. It's a scenario in which you're going to send something to a print-on-demand site and when you look at the size of the image itself, you're saying this is way too big or way too small for a print job. 
So let's imagine that we're sending this document that's 2100 by 1500 pixels to a print on demand site. But if we've prepared this document with a different dots per inch or pixels per inch setting than the 300, we're still sending the same amount of pixels. It's just that the image itself is going to look like it's way bigger. So 2100 by 1500 pixels at 100 dpi is going to look like an image that's 53 centimeters in length by 38 centimeters in inches. That would be 21 by 15. And you might be looking at that and saying, why am I sending something that's 21 inches by 15 inches to be printed on a mug or something really, really small? Well, it's not that it's probably going to print at 21 inches by 15 inches. It's that the site needs something that is large enough to print at a higher dots per inch. And just because you're seeing it as 21 by 15 at 100 dpi doesn't mean it's going to print at that. Because if your print service is printing at 300 dpi, then it's going to take this 2100 by 1500 pixel image printed at 300 dpi, it's going to print at 7 by 5. So this 7 by 5 or 21 by 15 or whatever it is here is in some ways absolutely meaningless. What's important is the number of pixels wide and the number of pixels tall and the dots per inch, the resolution of the image. Armed with this information, you should be able to send to your POD site or your print on demand site a document that is the correct size. Now before we finish up, I want to look at the four files that we have opened here in Photoshop in Windows Explorer. And you're going to find the same sort of thing happening on your Mac. Here is the Fruit 5x7 version 1 file. This is the high resolution one. You can see it's larger than all of the others. Its dimensions are this 2100 by 1500, this dimensions here. And its resolution, well, Windows splits these into horizontal resolution and vertical resolution, but you only need to see one of them because they're identical. And you can see that this is 300 dpi. The second largest of these files was this one here. It's 504 by 360 pixels in dimension at 72 dpi. If we put these dimensions here down in our pixel calculator, we should get the same 5 by 7. So it's 504 by 360 at 72 dpi. And see here we're getting the same 7 by 5. Here's the next largest of the files. This is 30 dpi. It's 210 by 150. Again, typing those values in here, we're getting the same 7 by 5 image. And finally, our very sad pixelated image, 28 by 20 at 4 pixels per inch. Well, again, it's 7 inches by 5 inches at a DPI of 4 pixels per inch. Totally nonsense when we go to print it, but that's what we're getting. So when you're calculating things for print on demand, typically you'll want to be looking at the actual pixel dimensions of your image and then its resolution rather than looking at it as a 7 by 5 or a 21 by 15. Because the 21 by 15 is really not helping you a lot. Everything that you need to know about an image is in its pixel dimensions and its resolution. So once we understand about the relationship between pixels and dots per inch and potentially the overall print size of a document, the next thing you're going to do is go to the website that you plan to use. In this case, I've just gone to Zazzle. And you'll find on every single print on demand website, they're going to provide you with help information for the types of images that you can upload. So here in the Dazzle Help Center, there is a page that tells you how to create and upload images for Zazzle. It's going to go through the image types that you can use, and it's going to go through the image sizes. They even have downloadable templates that you can download, open up in whatever graphic software you're using, for example, in into Photoshop and just make sure that you're designing to the right resolution and size that's going to print satisfactorily on the website for whatever it is that you happen to be wanting to print. 
So for example, they're looking at 200 PPI, just call it DPI for now, for mugs and drinkware. They're using higher resolutions for photo enlargements and posters and a much smaller resolution for apparel, aprons, bags, etc. So you just need to be clear in your own mind about the relationship between pixels and resolution and overall size and then go to whatever website you're using and they're going to tell you what they need. So if you match the particular size specifications you're much more likely to have a successful result. Note of course that if you're reducing the PPI the final image could be bigger so the same pixel dimension image at 150 PPI is going to print at double the size that it would for example for photo enlargements. I know this stuff is really tricky and I really empathize with anybody struggling to understand how it all works. I do have another video that's linked up in the top right hand corner that might also be of help to you if you're struggling. It's just another way of looking at the process. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step by step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.